So this is lesson one in the Android learning path, and it is all about trying to understand what Eclipse does. So we're going to cover some basics about Eclipse, and we're going to talk about its purpose and how you use it. And hopefully you'll, at the end of the lesson, you'll have a better understanding of what some people call a very confusing and mysterious environment. So first things first, what is Eclipse? So Eclipse is a piece of software, a free piece of software that you download and install on your machine. Um, it runs on Windows or Mac, which is good. And it's the primary development environment or integrated development environment, IDE, for um, building Android applications. So what I have here is I have our Monterey project, our Monterey Harbor project running inside of Eclipse or open inside of Eclipse. And you probably remember some from from some previous lessons that we built the Monterey Harbor project, which is a basic project. And then I went over to download the source code for the data, for the application, and I prepared the, the Android package. So then I opened up that package inside of Eclipse, and these are all the files associated with that package. So if we double click one of those files inside of the package, you'll see that right inside of Eclipse, we can edit this text. Um, all of these Java files, which will explain the project um, components here in a moment, but all of these Java files are just simple text and we can edit them right inside of Eclipse, which is kind of nice. So I'm going to close this window again, or this little view that I just opened, and we're going to talk about the first thing that you should understand about Eclipse. And that is, is there are lots and lots of views or windows that we can show. And different views and different windows um, will become kind of old hat to you and you'll get familiar with using them. But when you first open up Eclipse from its default configuration, it may not look like this. For example, if we open up a new view, for example, the console, the console will run and open down on the bottom. But you may choose to put the console, if you notice here, I can drag this tab and I can move it elsewhere. So now I have my package explorer here on the left, and then I have my console here on the right. And so I can move, you can see I can put them side by side, or I can put them along the bottom. There's lots of different ways that you can configure your Eclipse environment. And it's important to understand that yours may not look like mine, and that's okay. But what the different views and windows do um, is important. And so you'll get used to how your Eclipse environment is set up. And then lastly, um, about the Eclipse environment, the one thing that you'll want to probably do is save the way that the environment is laid out. So let's say that you like your package explorer on the left and your console or your output console or debugging console on the bottom. So this is this right here, we call this a perspective. So what you can do is you can use the window option and you can save the perspective. So I use a perspective called David Perspective um, and that just allows me to quickly set up all of the windows um, the way that I had them before. So that's the basics of the layout of Eclipse. So the next thing to understand about Eclipse is its actual purpose. What does Eclipse do? Um, a lot of people get really confused as in uh, when they begin starting making Android apps because they don't quite understand the relationship between um, Google and the Android operating system and the Android SDK and this Eclipse tool and all these different parts. So we'll try to walk through some of um, the relationships between those parts. So Eclipse is a development environment used by lots of different developers to do lots of different things. Android developers is just one kind of group or one group of people that uses the tool. So Eclipse by itself doesn't have any understanding of what Android is. So what Google did is they created an ADT or Android developer tool that works inside of Eclipse. So I've just gone inside, um, I've just gone to Google and searched for installing the ADT plugin. So what this is, is this is a tool that works in conjunction with Eclipse to help you manage the Android um, development process. So that's the first part. So the next thing that Android has is called an Android SDK, which technically doesn't understand what Eclipse is, and Eclipse doesn't understand what it is, 
until you connect the two of them together. Because keep in mind that a lot of people who develop Android applications don't use the Eclipse environment. We're saying to use the Eclipse environment because that's what Google recommends and it's much easier to do development, especially as a new programmer um, or a new mobile app developer. Um, it's much easier to do development using Eclipse than it is to use, um, say, command line tools and the terminal and all kinds of cryptic stuff. So, the Android Software Developer Kit is one part of this mix. The um, Eclipse um, ADT plugin, Android Developer Toolkit plugin, is another part of this mix. And then the Eclipse software is the third part of this mix. So we first get Eclipse, and then we use the Eclipse tool to install new software. And so what we want to do is we want to install the Android development tools inside of Eclipse. And in order to do that, the Android SDK must have already been downloaded. So I know that's a lot to get your head around, but the important thing to understand is Android and all of its, or excuse me, Eclipse and all of its Android knowledge won't exist until you install those Android parts that you get from Google. So, after you install the Android parts, you'll have new options in your Eclipse menu, such as Android Project. You'll have new windows like the Android SDK Manager and the AVD Manager, which we'll get to here in a moment. Um, but you will not have these if all you do is get Eclipse and launch it. It doesn't understand what these are until you configure that stuff. So the easiest way to get um, literal and step-by-step -step instructions on how to do that is to Google for it. So because this lesson and this, um, the objective of this video is to try to help you understand the purpose of Eclipse, I'm going to hide all of the, the contents of this Monterey Harbor application, this Android application, so that they don't distract you, the contents don't distract you. And we're going to go back to this concept of Android SDK Manager, AVD Manager, and Eclipse and the relationship between those three things. So I'm going to open up two windows. I'm going to open up the Android SDK Manager, and I'm going to show it over here on this side. And then I'm going to open up um, well, let me open up two windows at the same time. Eh, probably not. We'll leave this window here, and I'm going to minimize a lot of these things so that they don't overwhelm you. And, of course, it might not let me minimize it while it updates some things. Let's see. Yeah, perfect. So I'm going to minimize all this so the things don't overwhelm you because it can get very, very confusing. But what I have open here is the Android SDK Manager. And so the Android SDK Manager or Software Developer Kit Manager is a window or a component that we've installed inside of Eclipse that does nothing more, of, nothing more than manage all of the different components that are made available by um, Google and the Android development team. So you'll see here that I have lots of different things installed in my SDK Manager. Now your screen at the beginning won't have any of this, but eventually it'll probably have a lot of it. But you may be able to tell just by looking that I do lots of different types of Android development and each different version of Android, each device out there um, is a little bit different than the other. So there's 2.2 devices, there's 3.0 devices, there's 1.5 older devices. And so the Android SDK Manager is used to download from Google um, we, tools that we call libraries or code that we call libraries. So for example, if we were going to build an Android application and base it on API level 8 or Android 2.2, we would download by selecting it in our Android SDK manager all of the package for these things and then this tool would help us visually see what's installed on our machine. But you might ask um, how does it know where to find all of this stuff? So I'm going to close this for a minute and I'm going to show you how we told it where to get all these Android um, components. So I'm going to close the SDK Manager and I'm going to go back up here and I'm going to go to the Help button and I'm going to choose Install New Software. So when you first launch Eclipse and you don't have the Android development environment set up yet, 
you'll need to install new software and that's where you're going to install um, or that's where you're going to tell it where to find all of the different um, Android parts so that the instructions to do that um, are right here so if you'll notice you'll download the Android ADT plugin from this URL and in Eclipse you will tell it to work with this site and then it will go out and it'll find all of these developer tools so you'll go ahead and do that and you'll select these developer tools and then you'll say next and you'll install all of these tools so again um, this is not the lesson on how to install Eclipse. This is a lesson on how to understand what Eclipse does. So I'm not going to get too far into doing that. There's lots of instructions and tutorials online about, about how to actually install it. But the Android Software Developer Kit Manager window is the focus. And it's this window's job to help you understand what Android software developer components you have installed on your machine that work inside of Eclipse. So I'm going to close this um, and then I'm going to open up the next window and we'll talk about that window and that is the Android AVD manager. Now the Android virtual device manager or AVD manager um, is a window that helps you control emulators or simulators that you configure. Now unlike iOS where you only have a few devices Android has lots and lots of devices as we know. So we use the Android device virtual device manager to create using the new button as many simulators or emulators as we want. So you can see here in my list I have one emulator. If I wanted to create a new emulator I would use the new button and then I would name my new emulator my new emulator and then I would choose a target a target is nothing more than what kind of a device do you want to emulate or simulate. We could emulate a 1.6 device or a 2.0 device. Um, we would choose that. And incidentally, and this is a little tangent here, but all of the BuzzTouch 2.0 projects should be based on Google APIs, API level 8. That's different than Android 2.2. We use Google APIs, API level 8. So I would select that, and then I would say create AVD or create Android virtual device. So I have two in my list now, and you can create as many different kinds of, of, of emulators or device emulators as you want. Both of these in my list are running the same platform. Normally you don't have more than one running the same platform, but you could. So this window, the Android virtual device, window helps you manage all of the different types of simulators that you set up. So the Android virtual device window and the Android SDK manager work inside of Eclipse and incidentally I've got a couple of shortcut, shortcuts here to do the same thing open up these windows. So these work inside of Eclipse to help you the developer manage your Android project. So managing your Android project um, as we know, is one of the core things that Eclipse does. But fundamentally speaking, we also have to understand why do we need Eclipse if we could just manage these files and manage these um, the, the parts of our project, say in a different application like Windows, um, you know, Windows Explorer or Finder in a Mac or something like that. Well, the answer is we need Eclipse to do what we call compile our application. So along with uh, managing our, or along with understanding our virtual devices and our simulators and our Android software developer kit, Eclipse will actually compile all of our source code into an application. And when it does that, it'll create a file called an APK file. In this case, it would be uh, MontereyHarbor.apk, and that APK file, that extension, is what tells an Android device that it can install an application. So Eclipse compiles all of this source code into an APK file. So compile is um, another complicated 
um, concept for, for new mobile developers to understand, but really all it means is to gather all the source code up, use the Google libraries, the, the in this case Android 2.2, because that's how we set up the project, and build an Android app. It's really not a whole lot more complicated than that. So we use Eclipse to set up our project and then to compile that project into an app. And then we launch that app on a simulator and or an emulator in the Android world. Simulator and emulator, I, always, I use those words interchangeably. So this is our simple Monterey Harbor application and we have it running in the Android emulator. This is our map screen that we set up on our control panel. And we did that using Eclipse. So we set up an emulator, which is right here. We started the emulator using the start button. And then we ran our application. There's lots that goes into those different commands. And this video doesn't go through the details about um, different run configurations and how to launch it because it would take um, quite a while and I wanted to just focus on the purpose of Eclipse. So let's try to summarize what we talked about because we talked about a lot of stuff in the last 15 minutes. We talked about the Android SDK Manager, the AVD Manager, how Eclipse compiles our project's parts, all of the different parts on our project, into an app and then launches it on the simulator. So that's a very simplified view um, but it is, in essence, the overall purpose of Eclipse, the integrated development environment that we use to manage our Android libraries, our Android virtual devices, and our Android projects. So hopefully that was helpful, and we look forward to teaching you more in the next lesson in the Android learning path.